churches, you just got to get permission. If your church uses part of a school for their church service, because where I'm at, and I'm sure other areas do this, some churches will rent out a gymnasium or they will rent out an auditorium. What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and I wanted to do an update to, as you can see here, places that you need to get permission from before you carry in them. Because some of this did change a little bit. I addressed it in the uh, video I did with the constitutional carry uh, updates and things that changed, but I wanted to go ahead and just put an update out there because there's been some question around some of the things and we'll talk about that when we get to it hopefully I will have some answers to some of those questions uh, once I get them I will put that down in the description so it's down in there as well too uh, but I'm going to step out of the way here and we're going to get into this so this applies whether you have a permit get a permit or you're just going to constitutional carry yes with schools, you are allowed to get permission, but it's not just in their buildings, it's their property. If you were on school property for you to be able to get out of your vehicle and carry your gun, you're gonna have to have permission. And as you can see here, private, public, college, university, technical college, or any other post-secondary institution. So if it is a school, you've got to get permission. Now with that, you can have it secured in your vehicle, in the glove box, console, all right, in a container with an integral fastener under the driver's seat or in the luggage compartment. What they mean by integral fastener is that fastener has to be attached to that container. You can't go and super glue it. You can't tie it up or anything like that. It has to come from the manufacturer with the fastener attached to it. Now, you can carry into a school or college athletic event related to firearms. That doesn't mean a rifle team or drill team or anything like that, ROTC, if they're using uh, rifles with some of their drills and stuff, that means, or pellet or BB. They have to be shooting live ammunition, okay? They have to be shooting live ammunition, 22 caliber or higher. If you are just driving through the school, their property, okay? Because where I'm located, we're right near Clemson University. And there's other universities around here as well too. My closest one and the one that most people know of is Clemson University. There are main roads that pass through the university. If I'm just passing through, I can have the gun on my person or anywhere in the vehicle. But if I'm stopping on that school property, I've got to have it in one of these spots up here. And that is anyone 18 years or older, and that's loaded, round in the chamber, ready to go, can have it on the property, in the vehicle, again, in one of these spots. If it's not in one of these spots, you could face some pretty hefty criminal charges depending on the prosecutor for your area. So if you're not a member of USCCA, I would recommend going out there and checking them out. I'll have their link down in the description so you can go in there and check it out. Next, inside a publicly owned building of any kind, you got to get permission. So what I mean by publicly owned building and what I tell everybody is this is a question you need to keep in the back of your mind. Does someone's tax money fund this building? That means it's publicly owned. So tax office, uh, DMV, deeds office, zoning board, okay? If your tax money is funding that building for the area that you're in, that is a publicly owned building. Now the exception to that is your rest areas. Rest areas is automatic permission. Yes, rest areas are publicly owned, but that is the one exception you are allowed to carry into a rest area. And if you haven't gone into some of these rest areas late at night, early in the morning and stuff, I highly suggest you make sure you have a gun on you. All right, next. 
this is the one where the questions are coming in and this is the one where I will have this updated once I have the answers. This video might be up before I get all the right information because I try to do my best to make sure I give you all the right information, but the information I'm giving you is what the law says. Again, it's up to you on how you want to interpret that. But before, what was going on here is it was a DHEC certified clinic and you had to be an employee to be able to get permission. Now, anyone can get permission into a hospital, medical clinic, doctor's office, or other facility where medical services or procedures are performed. This is where the big questions are coming in is how are we classifying medical services and medical procedures? Okay, so what I did is I went and I actually looked up the definition for a medical procedure. All right, and what they're saying for that medical, for the definition of a medical procedure, all right, is me or any procedure performed by an in or performed on an individual by or under the general supervision of a registered medical practitioner. So, again, let me repeat that a medical procedure, the definition is any procedure performed on an individual by or under the general supervision of a registered medical practitioner. So where the big question is coming in is with pharmacies like at Ingalls and Walgreens and CVS and Target and places like that, is that gonna fall under a medical procedure? Big being getting vaccines and all that stuff. Because I've checked around, pharmacists are considered a practicing medical or a medical or registered medical practitioner. So yes, pharmacists are considered a registered medical practitioner. Like I said, I've hit up some lawyers that I know to see what their input is on this, but I really think it's going to come down to the law if law enforcement were to get involved and you're arrested and charged with improper carry what the deaf or how they're going to interpret what a medical procedure is that's why i said giving you what the law says giving you what the definition says you interpret it how you want to interpret it i will do my best to update down in the description um when this either after or when this video is posted once i hear back from the lawyers that i know on how they're going to look at this or what they think might be but again i'm pretty sure it's probably going to come back and it's going to be determining by the prosecutor for your area and how they interpret a medical procedure so i just want to get some clarification on that and help everybody out churches you just got to get permission if your church uses part of a school for their church service, because where I'm at, and I'm sure other areas do this, some churches will rent out a gymnasium or they will rent out an auditorium for their church service from a local school. If that is the case, it is that particular spot that the church is renting out is considered just a church it's not considered a school you only have to get permission from the church but again the church permission does not carry over to school hours whatever again whatever part they're using whether it be cafeteria uh, auditorium gymnasium whatever part of the school that they are using that part is considered a church not part of the school during church service hours the other thing you need to realize is the school district is allowed to ask that church for a list of members that are carrying handguns. So they have that right. I'm just letting you know what they have the right to do. Now, what do I mean by permission? So all these places we went over, permission must be written and signed. Do not just take verbal permission because if something happens and they feel they're gonna be held liable, I didn't tell them that. I don't know where they heard that. Now it's your word against theirs. Now, written and signed doesn't mean on any type of letterhead document looking all official. It could be notebook paper, copy paper, business card, sticky note, index card, whatever they want to use. But now let's say they type it up and email it to you. There's no signature there with that email unless they have some way to do an electronic signature. 
if there's no signature on that or like or no electronic signature you need to print that up you need to take it back in there to the person that gave you the permission and you need to have them sign it this is written and signed not written or signed it's written and signed so please folks make sure you do the right thing and get the right permission it needs to be written and signed if you have questions please feel free to reach out to me my website's down in the description that's got all of my contact information if i'm tied up with a class i will get back to you as soon as i can also please make sure to go in and check out my affiliates down in the description for great gear and stuff and use my discount codes to get you some great discounts off of their gear and products and stuff and always remember folks if you're not shooting you're reloading if you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.